Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we're talking about an extremely powerful plugin for Blender called MB Lab. In order to understand what MB Lab is all about, you kind of have to have a bit of a history lesson, but don't worry, I am going to keep this as brief as possible. Then we're going to jump in, show you how to set up MB Lab, get into what is new in the newest release. But for a spoiler, this version is finally infinitely more useful for game developers, and we'll get to why that is in a few minutes. But first, that history lesson. MB Lab is called thus because it was founded by Manuel Bastioni. It used to be called Manuel Bastioni Labs. This was kind of a research project for creating digital humans, and the wizardry behind this is staggering. Now, unfortunately, so I did a video on this in the past, back in uh, 2017, kind of walks you through what it's all about, shows you how you can create characters. I did this video called Making Awesome Humans Using Blender that used um, Manual Bastioni Labs to do things. Well, unfortunately, and I do have to bit a bit rudely from my side, I covered another tool called Make Human. Uh, Make Human is an alternative to this. It isn't in Blender. You can export out to Blender, but it is another character creator out there. It is free to use as well. At least it was at the time I did this video. But at the same time, I covered the news that Manuel Bastioni Labs were shut down. And it was a really weird scenario. Basically, the guy's like, I can't do this anymore. Uh, I, I need funding. And then instead of like doing an Indiegogo or a GoFundMe or anything like that, he basically asked for funds on like Facebook for a couple of days and then said, nope, didn't get it and shut the whole thing down. What the real kind of, I think, scenario behind this is Blender 2.8 was released and it was going to be a nightmare to port this thing over. And I think he just got sick of it, to be honest. So he keeps using Blender, but he stopped developing Manual Bastioni Labs, which was unfortunate. Fortunately, someone did pick up the slack. We've got MB Lab now, which is based on the source code for uh, the Manual Bastioni Labs. It's another team working on this, and they released 1.78 release recently. And you can see here it's available at mblab.dev. We're going to come back here in a second and look at what this newest version is all about, and then more specifically, why it really matters for game developers. But first, let's go a little bit of a hands on. I'm going to show you how to go ahead and use this guy. Obviously, you're going to want to start off by downloading this zip file right here. As you can see, once again, 92 megabytes in size. Their servers are a little bit on the weak side, so do expect it may have to reload a couple times. You may get some server errors, whatever. Just keep trying until you get it. Uh, it was released about a week ago. There was more demand now, so the servers are running a bit more stable. But once you've got it downloaded, I just fire up Blender. This is Blender 2.0. 8.3, I think there's a, a newer version since, but it'll work just fine. I think any version of Blender after 2.8 should be fine. And then what you're gonna wanna do is come into edit and then preferences. You're gonna go to the add-ons category right here and then do an install and then find that guy wherever you downloaded it. So where are you? I'm guessing it starts with M. There we go, MB Labs, and install it. This is a fairly sizable add-on, so this takes a, a few seconds to get up and going. And here we see it, come on. Bump, 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 bump. All right, you know what? I, I'm going to go ahead and do a quick pause so you don't have dead silence. <laughs> okay, literally. As I hit the pause button, it finished. So, okay, here you can see it. It is installed. It goes into the tools view menu. Uh, and then we're just going to go ahead and enable it. So now it is there and ready to go. Now, the interesting thing here is I downloaded Blender 2. Point, or sorry, 1.78 version of MB Labs. And you're going to notice down here there is a check for a new update. And in this case, it worked just fine. The last case, it actually already had an update. So uh, do be sure to check every once in a while, or you can do an automatic check if you so wish to do so. It's okay. We've got the newest version. We are happy and ready to go. So how do we go ahead and use MB Labs? Well, for that, what we do is hit the toolbar over here on the side. We can pop it out right there, or we can just hit the N key to pop it out. And you're going to notice here we've got MB Lab available down here. And this is where you basically are creating your character. Now, I have to warn you, I'm going to have to tab away. This is my second time doing this video at this part uh, because your character starts nude. And unfortunately, uh, that is not going to work that well with YouTube and its algorithms. So I'm going to have to, I don't know, we'll cover what's new in this release as it's starting to create the character. But the key thing here you can see the detail is right here this is where you pick uh your base character type and and basically you've got um uh afro latino and caucasian and asian base meshes and then there's uh subtypes of all of those on top of that we also have some anime style stuff here anime elf anime dwarf uh female and male in that regard. So if you're trying to create an anime character, you've also got realistic versus not realistic. But I'll go, let's go ahead and create a Caucasian male. I'm going to basically recreate myself in this thing, which I actually I can't do. Uh, on top of that, we've got here a couple of toggled options. The cool thing is with this port, 
They've got Blender 2.8 support. That includes EV support right there. Uh, we could create muscles and inverse kinematics initially. And we can also have it set up a studio type rig for us. And then we are ready to go. We go ahead with create character. I'm gonna do that. And then I'm going to switch over to my browser. Uh, let me just see that I'm queued up and ready to go. All right, here we go. And we'll let it create that character. And so while it's running in the background, eventually they will put shorts on. Oh, 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 stop that. It will put shorts on and then we will be able to come back. So now let's take a look at what's actually changed in the MB Lab release. So we've got uh, uh, skins were updated, removed subsurface scattering, scale group replaced with vector math node, bump map added, thickness map removed, modified skin oil maps, eyelash shader now uses bump and gloss. Uh, modified the maps, bump maps now have a 4K resolution, modified freckle, ma uh, freckle, 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 uh, modified the freckle mask, uh, modified the material engine, changed the lighting code. You see basically a lot of just kind of across the board type improvements, but the big improvement with this one is actually going to be something that happened in licensing. But the big ones, I guess, at the top here are a uh, character development framework has been introduced. That one is important. That, that one el enables people to create their own base meshes and we kind of get away from a copyright problem that were involved there all along, especially for game developers that don't want to release their own art assets. And then we have a hair engine now adds hair shaders to cycles and EV. So some nice stuff in the 1.78 release. And hopefully I have a non-nude male to come back to. Yes, I do. Excellent. All right, so here you go. This is the base mesh that it created for us. Uh, switch over here into EV mode. It should have compiled, oh, okay, no, that was fine. We should be fine, the algorithm shouldn't be too upset with me. So here you can see the character that it created for us. And there is a lot of fine tune control you can do over here. You can switch out the character's age. And the impressive thing is there is an aging algorithm at work here. So here is, let's look at this guy's face and let's just increase that age up. So let's, Let's go to, I don't know, 76. See, we've actually got aging in the face. It, it does that, let's do 99. So as it, it, it's got a lot of procedural oomph behind it that, oh, I think that's as hard as you can go. And it might actually be, so if I do 0 0.7, is it on a scale? So 62 years old, or I can go back to say 40 years old. And you're seeing it's changing up, no, it's not like that, it's 0 0.4. All right, so there we go, we're 48 years old and you're seeing it actually is making uh, underlying changes as the person ages. It's really impressive in that regard. We've also got just fine tune control over the character's mass. Oops, I left clicked as well. Uh, so let's go to 0 0.6 on that one. I do find the sliders a little frustrating to use. So we just got a fair bit more, let's just say gelatinous. So let's go here to 0 0.5. And you can sort of see immediately how much the mass is is actually affecting things. So that one didn't actually update, I don't think. So let's go to 0 0.3. And then we've got tone changes as well. So let's go 0 0.2 on tone. And you're gonna see, I've now, I'm now pretty cut. I'm, I'm bigger and bulkier. We're going for that Bane look right now. So you can see here, you can control the top level toggles of your character right up here under the character shape stuff. But well, then we go way beyond that one. So we can come in here, uh, character library, and it drops down down over here. Now I told you there was a lot of different uh, options. So we could do like a, a default. So let's do an extremely, uh, or, or let's do an extreme bodybuilder physique. So we can drop to a pre-built and boom drop in like that. And at the same time, there was a bunch of, um, uh, what are they using the words phenotypes or basically uh, subtypes of each uh, racial category here. So for example, I could do this guy more as uh, Norded. I think Norded, this would be like your Whew. All right, that did kind of hideous things to him. Uh, not really sure why it toggled over the extreme bodybuilder look, though. But as you can see, you kind of uh, can blend all those together there under your character libraries. And then we've got random options. So we can just randomize everything as much as we want. Or we can actually keep the things that we want. So if we want to preserve the face but randomize everything else, we can do that. And let it just kind of run through its algorithm and then come up with the character that works for you. And you can just kind of keep doing that over and over and over again. You've got options for, if I want to do just a straight out character of a human, I can do that there and then we're gonna get some weirder results. And we just keep running that as we go. All right, yeah, so that that's pretty hideous. So I'm gonna go back to realistic and we'll generate something there. All right, there you go. So we're back to our model. And we can keep going here. So we can do fine tune control over the skin here. So I, could, I have to turn on 
uh, that setting before it'll work. Where did that setting go? It's normally a checkbox down below. But you can see you've got control over the amount of freckles on this character, so 0 0.4. Um, all right, I think it's under display options. Yeah, okay, so I got to enable displacement preview. All right, so that should work. So now if I want to come in here, I can uh, change the freckle amounts. I can, so 0 0.4. Nine. This person is very freckly now. And so, so you got fine-tuned control over how the skins work, so the veining of the skins and everything like that. It's, it's kind of amazing the amount of control you actually have over your character. Um, you also have uh, control over the rig that's set up. You could do um, various other things here. But what you're going to probably want to do eventually is finalize your character. So finalize. Finalize tools will be down here. So let's call this um, finalize. Like so I'll dump this in the temp directory. Sure, untitled. All right, so we're going to basically, our model is ready to use. It is now textured and in gameish form. This takes a little bit of time, as you can tell by the little spinning wheel here. Ba -ba -da -dum. So I'll pause for a second. All right, now it's all done. So we've created our character. Now we're into the after creation tools. I'm just going to really skim through this stuff here. But you see, you got a lot of after control. So here we got a character. Oh, God, I hate an ugly character. I have a knack for that. So what we could do is go ahead. We could create a face rig. So if we were doing facial animations, boom, we now have all the control points for handling the mouth and, and animating this guy right there. We've got the ability to bring in. So we could bring in BVH or BioVision? Bio? Anyways, BVH animations can be brought in. We can load and change up our pose. On the topic of pose, we can switch between uh, T and, okay, where was that? It's here somewhere. So you can switch between an A pose and a T pose, etc. cetera. Uh, we've got other options here where you're going to be coming in a lot of cases. Um, I'm not going to do anything with expressions, is assets and hair. This is where you can bring in other things. So if, one thing that's fairly new is particle hair, which I find kind of hilarious. So we go here. Let's go to some black cherry hair from particles. Oh, it crashed. All right, that, that was not what I wanted. All right, well, what basically it allows you to do is boom, particle projection hair. I, I'm not going to go into the debug. We basically saw what I wanted to see there, but what you should be aware of that I didn't really cover is there's also proxying tools, so you can start bringing in clothing meshes, etc., and start playing them or laying them on the character. There is full documentation on how you can do that. So this isn't about um, creating dressed characters, but there are tools in there. Basically, you can set a proxy up over top of your mesh, and then your, you know, you can bring in an object file or something, or FBX or something, of modeled clothing, a shirt, a jacket, whatever, boots, and have it conform automatically to that proxy you set up. So that functionality is there as well. Again, unfortunately, we crashed, but we got and covered most of what I wanted to see here. So you're getting these fully rigged, fully created characters that have um, quite a bit of control available to you. It's kind of a staggering ability here, but the killer part was until now, MB Lab, all of the base meshes, all of the stuff that controlled all of what we just saw, well, it was under a license called AGPL, which basically meant if you use these base meshes to create your own derived mesh, you would also have to open source your assets. And for game developers, that might have been a bit of a game killer, right? So basically, we would have had to create a fully open source game, assets and all. And that was unfortunately, uh, unfortunately though, we've got uh, Blender Nation announcement right here of what they did with this 1.78 release. But the key thing here is, this release introduces the ability to create your own characters for MB Lab, something that has been requested since the beginning of MB Lab. These new tools have been in development for over eight months uh, with, um, and with these user tools and developers can build uh, new characters with restriction-free licensing so that they can be used in commercial games along with other things. Now, the character process is still a little tricky. The documentation is still a work in progress, but the fact that you're gonna be able to bring in your own base character meshes and not rely on the AGPL in hindered versions makes this tool so much more useful for commercial game developers who don't necessarily want to release all of their assets out into the public. So right now, you can use this, by the way, in your own game. Just be aware that AGPL license is going to be a real, real restriction for now. So that is something that has changed here. And you're also going to, again, be able to introduce your own characters for MB Labs. And that's going to really open it up. And hopefully, we'll get a bit of a community around that as well. So that is really the big announcement, which is interesting because it's not really in this announcement other than this whole dev character 
MB dev character development framework introduced part, they should probably go into a bit more detail because hands down, that is the big part of this MB lab update. So that is it. Uh, that's MB lab 1.7.8 really going in the right direction. It's nice to see someone picked up. And this is one of those things that's cool. There's a lot of times when an open source project is abandoned, it dies. In this case, some other people have picked up the code, figured it out, and have been making releases and moving it in a good direction. So it's awesome to see that MB Lab is continuing. So again, if you want to check that out, it is available at mblab.dev. Uh, yeah, so that's it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.